Hey everybody, and welcome to the Coinos Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, Daniel, the creator of Lords Forsaken. Daniel, could you start by just giving us a brief overview of the game? Hello, everybody. Well, Lords, Lords Forsaken, it's a game which is based on ancient civilization mythology. Um, the idea came out because we kind of realized that the industry was a little bit saturated with fantasy worlds, uh, too many of them. And, you know, it takes time to, to learn a new, a new lore, a new fantasy world. And we figured that why couldn't just leverage on ancient mythology because everybody relates to it in, a, in one way or another. And well, we think it's beautiful anyways. So, and additionally, we found that when it comes to trading card games, there hasn't been a game around, at least not lately, uh, which is uh, using this uh, theme. So yeah, we were very confident about this theme. So the game is essentially a, a tradable NFT uh, card board game. And uh, it's been inspired by many other games. So we've been doing research on the game mechanics that made successful games so much fun. And we ended up with a unique formula, uh, blending all these different mechanics. And also we, we tried to find the specific crypt incentives that made this successful games so much, so addictive and so, so much uh, exciting to play. So yeah, in a way, Lord's Forsaking is, uh, it's like a Frank, a Frankenstein. We, uh, we have many different, uh, inspirations from other games. Yeah. I definitely think that we're still in the early days of blockchain gaming. Most blockchains still have terrible user experiences. One of the most successful blockchain games in the world is Splinterlands. It's a lot of its success is because it was on Steam, the, the first feeless blockchain, and was a huge inspiration to us when building Coinos. We are friends with the, the Splinterlands team. We had worked with them for years at Steam. And all the time, as we were literally architecting Coinos, we were asking ourselves, what would Splinterlands want us to do? And, and part of the reason that we were doing that is because we saw how, um, how popular they were on Steam, how, what they were missing there, and what they weren't going to be getting anywhere else. And so when we're building a blockchain and we're trying to make sure that there's going to be demand for what we're doing, holding them up as a, as a representative more broadly of games that that would be so perfect for blockchain um, <clears throat> that helped us design Coinos and implement it the way that we did. So, you know, we clearly thought my point is that we clearly thought that it's still early days of blockchain gaming, that there was a huge opportunity here. And I still think that that opportunity uh, is, is there. There are no other blockchains that are, have, very short block times that allow for real-time engagement that don't have fees like Hive and Steam, but also have smart contracts uh, and have free accounts. And so yeah. I certainly agree with you that there's this huge opportunity here that, that, it, it, that we now have a lot of examples of games that have tried to break through, but nobody is broken through yet. And I think the genius thing that you caught on to is using ancient mythology as the source material. And I, we had a conversation offline that I wanted to go back to where I asked you, why are all these games inventing all of this complicated stuff? And you said, well, that's what they do in traditional gaming, basically. And so yeah. it seems like there's been a bit of follow the follow the herd or follow the crowd here that has created this opportunity for you. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when you want to start a new product, uh, you look around, especially you look at your best competitors and you just mimic, you just benchmark. And I mean, that's a very safe bet in some ways, but it might not be 
good enough to differentiate yourselves. And yeah, I'm very, I'm very grateful that I, I didn't fall into that trap myself because I really think these, these uh, fantasy worlds are, are, yeah, they are all over the place and people are looking for something different. Um, but yeah, that's something that, 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 that happens very often. And regarding the, the technical um, aspects of blockchains, yeah, there's, I mean, we could be debating about this forever, but uh, so many games were struggling with, if not with the fee issue for the user experience, then they were struggling with the fact that they could not have native NFTs. Um, so Coinos, I would say is the first, if not the first, one of the first that, that actually solves of, of all these problems as a blockchain infrastructure for the game. So me as a game developer, not having to worry about uh, fees for my users and true ownership of the NFTs. That's beautiful. I mean, I don't even need to worry about a database which keep tracks of who owns what. The blockchain take, takes care of that on itself. Uh, that's a huge load off my shoulders. <laughs> yeah, and, and th that should be the goal of a platform, right? Take, take, take loads off of the developer's shoulders. One thing that I think is interesting and helps explain, I think, what you're trying to do with the game is, is your background. Um, you know, I think you're a lifelong gamer, but you've also, sure. but you also have a lot of experience as a gamer, uh, on the blockchain. And I think that's why you were able to spot this opportunity. You said safe bets. I have a belief that there's no such thing as a safe bet. You got, you got to take a risk. You got to take a chance. You got to see an opening, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and try to go through it. And I think your background and your experience is part of what has enabled you to see this, this opportunity and, and create a situation where there's high risk. You got to build a product and get it out to market, um, but also high potential reward. So could you talk a bit about your, your background and what got you to, to where, to this point you're at today? Yeah. So I've always been a gamer. I mean, more than I would like to, I guess. Um, but I mean, what can you do when you love something? Yeah. So I've been, uh, I've been gaming ever since I got my first computer at home. I, I think I was like 10 years old or something. Uh, I'm 36 now. So it's, it's always been a constant passion. Uh, also trying to figure out how this game works and how to, I'm very competitive. So I always, I always try to like, uh, be good at games and, uh, I've, I've always been pretty competitive. So when I, when I, when I discovered this concept of play to earn, I was like, damn, this is like the ultimate incentive for competitive players. I mean, and I, and it's, it sounds fair to me because like competitive gaming is tough. You know, you have to learn, you have to sweat, you have to be patient. So. The fact that you can potentially make some money, whether it's much or not, on the side, it's 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 a very nice, uh, it's a very nice, well-deserved uh, uh, prize for for the winner, for the good player. And uh, yeah, I I I think that also something something very important to talk about here is like, um, what kind of game are we trying to do? Are we trying to do like a game only for hardcore players, or is it going to be something that someone could play casually and i think the beauty of card games is that if if made correctly they can serve both purposes um you can have short games where you don't need much preparation you can play your cards right away yet there is a lot of depth if you want to go down the rabbit hole and this is this is one of the of our objectives we want a game that can be played casually let's say you come after work you have a beer and you want to relax and play some games, you can have much of matches like in five, 10 minutes and then move on with your life. And now if you want to go like super competitive, you can also do it because like the amount of combo possibilities among the cards, it's so vast. You can, you can study many different combinations, different strategies, different tactics. Um, you can level your cards. Uh, so 
I think it will appeal, I hope it will appeal to both uh, crowds, the casual and, and the hardcore gamers. Yeah, that's very interesting. So what would you say are your hopes for the game? Where do you, where do you hope to go with this? Well, my, my, my goal is to uh, expect that people find my prototype as much fun as I do. And then from that point on, I would like to slowly uh, integrate the community feedback on, on the design and development. So I, 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 would, I would like to just give the initial spark to the project and then have it fueled by, by a community. Because, I mean, no matter how good you are, how smart you are, like 1,000 voices always are going to be more reasonable than a bunch of developers. And I, I, I think, I think it, it, it would be great to, to have the game mature over there, over over the months, over the years, with uh, with strong community that cares about the game, that cares about balance, uh, it's not an easy task because every time there's new cards involved, you need to make sure that they don't disrupt the the, the game. They, it has to be properly balanced, uh, new mechanics. So, um, yeah, I would love to I would love to build a, a strong community where where there's very a very transparent communication between the development team and, and and them and and a lot of back and forth when it comes to, to game design and and to create something unique to create really something unique and to learn from others that have been around all the games that have been around in the past i wish we can extract the best of them the best mechanics and discard uh, whatever mistakes or bad decisions they they made, hopefully that, that that would be my dream. Yeah, something you said before made me think: if you add value, you should be rewarded. Players add value. The most valuable thing in a game is the player base, and so rewarding them makes perfect sense. It makes perfect economic sense. It was never really possible before blockchain and so the way i kind of interpret this is that the is that the goal is to create a community where everybody is rewarded for adding value to this game for participating in this game and i think that that's the right way to build up these games from the ground up in a way that you know distributes the revenue or the you know the 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 value distributes the value that's created amongst the broadest set of people. And I think that that's the potential that blockchain brings to the table is that you can have these decentralized organizations, these bottom up organizations. And um, to me, when I hear you talk about your kind of vision, that's what I hear is, and, and I think that's very aligned with what we're trying to do with Coinos and why we built Coinos the way we did. For example, like having upgradable smart contracts and having on-chain governance and having it be um, composable so that people can model governance over smart contracts off of on-chain governance. And now you can start having the decentralized aspects of your game decentralized and opened up to the community for voting and participation. Not everything should be decentralized. Not everything should be on chain. My point is just the, these parallels um, between, you know, what each of us are trying to do. And I think that alignment is what sets up uh, a collaboration between an application and the underlying platform for, for maximum success. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the the fact that we, we don't need to build from scratch a monolithic architecture that has to work perfectly from now on till the future. Um, the fact that we can actually slowly integrate new features in a modular way to, um, for example, a DAO, for example, community DAO, uh, in order to take decisions for for the game. That, that's that's beautiful. That's beautiful, and in in in, in virtual no downtime, because you you test a, a smart contract for the new features that you want to integrate. Let's say in the game DAO, 
and then you upload it and there's no downtime. Suddenly, uh, the DAO has a new feature. Uh, that's great. I mean, that's, that's beautiful. We don't, because coming up with a unique monolithic thing that has to work for years in the future, I mean, this is not very realistic. And we, we all developers, uh, we all developers want this ability to, to do uh, a smart contract updates chunk by chunk in steps. Uh, that's, that's, that's really, really great. Yeah, I, I'm so excited about this. I mean, look, it's elephant in the room. Right? <laughs> so I already talked about Splinterlands. Great game. Friends of mine, I think if you haven't heard of it, if you haven't played it, go go play it after listening to this conversation. It, it it's a great game. Oh, it is for sure. You know, and, and and they've done so much, and it's still a great game. None of this is intended to you know be, be criticism, but they've had to build all of this stuff up on top of Steam to to make it work and to enable everything that they that 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 they want to do and it's it, it's it in many ways it is not benefiting from the blockchain itself because they've had to construct it all themselves and so by having a smart contracts platform with this with the same feeless design and smart contracts and all of these other smart contracts that it's interoperable with and you know people are already working on DAO tooling. People are already working on proposals. And so these smart contracts will be out there and they'll be getting better and they'll be getting better and they'll be getting better. And developers will be able to come in and, you know, take what you're doing and spin up their own interfaces, you know, uh, and, and create a situation where now people are building apps for Lords Forsaken that you literally didn't even imagine. Yeah. Because you didn't think it through. Because because who can think this stuff through that far? But when it's all on the same, you know, b backing database, open, public, decentralized, the yeah. the imaginations of people um, to 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 take to take that information and run with it and build build additional applications on top of it is awesome. Yeah, let's take. For example, two of the of the most successful crypto games in the space, Gods Unchained and Splinterlands. So God, Gods Unchained, they do have access to native NFTs, but they they, they suffer from the problem of uh, user experience because not only they are not a web web based game, they have to they force you to, to, to download a client and install it in your machine in order to try it, but also there are fees involved. And then Splinterlands doesn't have the user experience problem with the fees because the hype is fearless, but they do not natively, natively support NFTs. So they had to reinvent themselves to, to come up with something that mimics uh, an NFT with all, all the development overhead that, that involves. So to this day, there's not one single successful game around which is uh, taking advantage of a, of a blockchain like Kainos, not even one at this, at this uh, moment in time. Which is surprising even to me. I yeah. mean, I'm very happy about it, but it's super I, the, surprising. The industry is yeah. uh, very mature yet. Uh, it, mm -hmm. It's still very young, uh, very young. So this thing, it was, it was a matter of time. Yeah, and our, our position has always been that to a certain extent with Steam, we kind of stumbled on the resource credit system, the initial bandwidth system, that was invented for coin for for steam was not good and it was kind of just like oh people won't use a reddit clone if there's fees so let's like throw together this bandwidth system which we wound up totally scrapping and replacing with the resource credit system and we're like holy this thing's pretty great you know yeah. and not that many people knew about it everybody else was in gas fee land like you said earlier right they just were looking around at everything around them and we were like you know i think that this is the key that this could really uh, unlock things i think we've covered a lot of great ground is there is there anything else you'd like to say to anybody who happens to be watching or listening to this um well 
Uh, I would just like to, to say that any any feedback is more than welcome. It's a uh, it's big, big help. Hope that you you will like it, that you will enjoy it, and I'm sure that together we can we can build something great. Thanks for watching this episode of the Coinos Podcast. Don't forget to follow Coinos Network on Twitter and YouTube. You can also listen to the Coinos Podcast on your favorite podcasting platform.